in my younger years I used to paint cars and one of my favorite parts of that process was pulling off the tape and seeing what lies beneath. Um, and also it's kind of fun to see how neat and clean everything is coming out. So now that we have all of the uh, seams paid with the seam compound, we can get ready to do some painting. Uh, so that's what we'll do next. I'm really happy with the way the seams came out. Uh, the first step now in preparing to paint the boat is to prime. And there are three different situations that we need to consider in priming the boat. Above the water line, below the water line, and the lead ballast keel. So let's take a look at what our options for priming below the water line are. Well, in my research, I found that there were three different types of primer that you could use below the waterline. The first would be to take the anti-fouling abative paint and to thin it down about 10%. The second would be to use a two-part epoxy primer. And the third would be to use a red iron oxide heavy metal primer. So let's explore what the pros and cons of each one of those are. I had mentioned that I had done some research onto what type of primer I should use on the bottom side. And one of the things that I did is I went to the Wooden Boat Forum, which is a part of Wooden Boat Magazine's website. And on there, you can ask a question, and then lots of other boat builders and shipwrights will answer that question or offer their opinion. So I did that and asked what they thought a good bottom side primer would be. So before we get too far ahead of ourselves, we need to talk about what bottom paint that I'm going to use. And I've decided to use Total Boats Krypton. And the reason for that is, one, is that it comes in white, which is the color part of the color scheme that I'm interested in on my boat. And also, it's distributed by Jamestown Distributing, which is been a great supporter of my project. So what is anti-fouling paint? Anti-fouling paint is basically a paint that has a biocide in it that deters and inhibits the growth of submarine organisms. This is important in that it helps the performance of the boat and also it helps to keep the bottom of the boat clean. Krypton that I'm using is copper free and in the old days actually they would even nail copper sheets to boats. So a lot of paints, anti-fouling paints, have copper in them. And this paint is copper free. And since I'll be sailing in a freshwater lake that is fished, I think it was important that it's environmentally safe. Now we can get back to the question at hand. And that is, what primer to use on the bottom side? The first choice that I had mentioned earlier was that we could simply use the anti-fouling abative paint that I'm using for the finish coat as a primer. Now the spec sheet says that you can thin it down around 10% and put on several thin coats. Now, that presents a couple of problems for me. One, it's an abative paint. And what abative paint is, is it's paint that wears off or sloughs off or abates from the surface throughout the season. It's designed to do that. Now, what happens then is you don't really know when the finish coat and the primer coat have met each other. If this was a different color, that would help. However, it would still be an abative paint, and then you would have your primer sloughing off or abating as well. So the second choice would be to use a two-part epoxy primer. Now, the opinions were very varied in whether that's a good primer to use. 
a lot of people thought that it was a little bit too hard and would deter the swelling of the planks. Others said, no, it's designed to do that and it'd be perfectly fine. The other side of it is, it's a fairly expensive material to be using when there's other options. Now, the third option, and probably the most popular of the responders from the Wooden Boat Forum, was to use rust Rusty Metal Primer. Uh, it has a couple of benefits. One, it's readily available. And secondly, it's a different color than the final coat. So that as that final coat abates, you'd be able to tell when it was getting too thin as the primer would start to show. So this is the choice that I'm going to use. I'm going to use the uh, Rust-Oleum's Rusty Metal Primer. One of the great things about this product is it is available locally and it's always nice to be able to support local stores. So you can see is that nice red color and if many of you have seen me do this before where I punch holes in here. Um, last time I did this I got several comments about other ways of doing this. This is the way I like to do it for a couple of reasons. Um, it's always worked for me. And the other thing is, is I learned that from my dad. So whenever I do that I'm sort of reminded of him. So it's a little bit of a nostalgic thing as well. So I need to get a stir stick, give that a stir, and if, when I purchased the paint I did have them put it on the shaker so I can tell that, that it's pretty well mixed. I'm going to use um, a small foam roller here. Uh, I think that's, I, I like these a lot. A, they're disposable and they give you a, really a nice finish. So we'll get started putting some paint on the boat. As I had mentioned before, that I'm going to go about in the middle of the boot stripe where I switch from one primer to the other. Looks like it's covering pretty well, but I'm ultimately going to give it two coats. things that I almost forgot to do, that was to tape off the transom, because I'm going to keep the transom uh, the bright finish. Now that I've got the bottom side all primed with two coats of primer, it's time to turn our attention to the top side. And many of you have might remember in the past that one of the color combinations that I really liked was Nathaniel Herrenshoff's boat, Erlon. So I went to the George Kirby Paint Company who mixes custom colors and got a custom green very similar to what that green on the Herrenshoff boat is. So since I'm using a George Kirby topside paint, I've decided I'm going to use George Kirby's primer because I know that they'll absolutely be compatible. So let's get busy priming 
the top side. Now that the primer is dried for 24 hours, uh, I'm going by and sanding it with a 120 grit sandpaper. With a soft wood like cedar, whenever you put paint or even just water for that matter, the, it gets, the grain gets raised. And you run across this and it feels a, a little bit um, rough and here it's very smooth. So it doesn't take very much, just a couple of swipes. and it goes down pretty easily. I did the bottom side first since it was white and then doing the top side. So we'll get this finished up and get started on some paint. After I finished sanding, I dampened a rag with some thinner as a tack cloth and got all of the dust off of the surface and make sure that it was nice and clean. I'm pretty excited to get started putting some paint, final paint on the boat. That's it for the first coat. Paint went on really smoothly. Uh, I really like these four inch foam rollers. This curved end fit in the keel here. Really, really nice. Uh, now I left the top of the keel uh, unpainted because the lead keel will, ballast keel, will sit on top of there as well as the deadwood. So there'll be a certain amount of fairing that will have to be done once those are attached. So we'll let this dry and get a second coat on it. The bottom coat is nice and dry. Uh, it's really a pretty fast drying paint. The uh, spec sheet suggests one or two coats per season and an extra one or two coats on a new substrate. So I put three coats on at this time. 
Uh, once I put the keel and the dead wood on and I do a little fairing in here, I'll probably add another one or two coats then. So I'm pretty excited now to see what this green is going to look like on here. So let's get that paint mixed up. Well, I'm super excited to get this paint on the boat. I had mentioned before that I got this paint from the George Kirby Jr. Paint Company. Uh, and they really specialize in custom marine colors. So they could not have been nicer. I talked to them on the phone probably three, maybe four times. Um, full of advice and good advice, I would say. Um, so all I had to do was to find a uh, color chip that I was happy with and I sent it to them in the mail and within uh, five days or so I have this uh, quarter paint on my doorstep. So uh, if anybody needs a custom color marine paint uh, I, I highly recommend George Kirby. So let's take a look and see what this paint looks like. Uh, it's pretty huh? It's exactly what I was looking for. So we'll give it a Stir. First I need to get some gloves. That's pretty. I'm liking it already. So I'd mentioned before that I'm using these four inch foam rollers with about a, I think it's a three eighths inch nap on it. And they put the paint on in a very nice even coat. The other thing that I have is a natural bristled brush here that can then tip the paint. So once you get it, just kind of drag it across there and help smooth that out. I didn't do this for the bottom paint because it'll be underwater for the most part. Uh, this will be visible, so I want to make sure that it has a nice smooth finish to it. The way I'm doing this is I'm painting a small section with the roller. And then coming back and tipping it in. Last week, I fared out the lead ballast keel using some epoxy fairing compound. I then used Total Boat's Total Protect, which is a two-part epoxy primer and barrier coat to prime the lead keel. The main reason I use this is, as I had mentioned before, I'll be sailing in a freshwater lake that is fished, and I felt that it was really important that that lead be sealed. All that's left now is to paint the black bootstripe on the boat. Now I have gone through and I've taped along with scribed lines and I mainly have done that for insurance because I'm actually using uh, angled sash brush, 
which is designed to get very close to a line. And in order to do that, I'm able to just get a little bit of paint on there, and that angled sash brush allows me to get right up to that scribed line very neatly. I get just the right amount of paint on the tip of the brush, and you can see that it's very easy with a steady hand to just pull that brush along. Well, I've got to say, I am really, really happy with the way that came out. Um, really excited about the color. Um, gets us one step closer to flipping the boat over, which is what will happen in the next episode. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you the next time on The Art of Boat Building. <laughs>